appreciate it. I think I'm going to bring my presentation up here. As they're doing that, um, I thought I'd just give a little bit of background for to to remind people of where where um, I'm coming from uh, with this presentation. So back um, this was before I was on council when uh, the city sold the Hyatt Hotel. Each district was allotted one million dollars to spend as um, the council member saw fit. Now they had to take a vote, but it was generally yes. Could I interrupt you for just a second? We are we're getting a lot of feedback on um, my end. We're going to try and figure out. I'm going to mute everybody and then unmute you and see if that takes care of it. Um, now, as soon as I figure out how to unmute you. There, I did it. Okay. Does that work? Is that better? Is that better for everybody? Yep. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So, um, as I was talking about, um, the $1 million that District 6 uh, received from the sale of the Hyatt Hotel, my predecessor, Janet Miller, uh, decided that uh, that would be best used in uh, revitalizing and renovating the neighborhood center. And uh, she asked me if I were elected, if I would carry on that project, and I said, absolutely, I would. As we began to work through this, looking at the neighborhood center and the library, um, we came to the conclusion that it would be a good idea to bring those two um, those two organizations together. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today in terms of where we're headed now uh, with that. Um, so we'll go to um, we'll go to the agenda, which is like the third slide. So what I'm going to take you through today, and um, I know it's a little clunky with um, a virtual meeting like this, but if you have a question while I'm talking, please feel free to interrupt me. I may have to back up because sometimes I know it takes a little while to get in, but please do feel free to do that. And of course, I'll take any questions at the end that you want to talk about. So I'm just going to take you through um, a description of the community, what the aspiration is, a vision for this, what we're at least for right now calling a community resource center, the framework for this, what our partner collective mission is, who the partners are, what we think the benefits are um, to the community, the um, timeline of how we got to where we are, and then next steps. Okay, next slide, please. So the Evergreen um, Neighborhood Center right now is located at 27th and Woodland, which is just across the campus from where the Evergreen Library is at 23rd. 25th in Arkansas. They're both in um, located in an area that is a large and growing Hispanic population with a long and rich cultural history. And um, historically, we've referred to that as the North End. And the North End is home to families who have been here for many generations, as well as some uh, very recent immigrants. So let me just show you a little bit of demographic information. So next slide. And then, yes, thank you. There are three census tracts that we look at that surround the um, Evergreen campus. And when you look at the, there, so there's about 14,000 people that live in those uh, three census tracts. And if you look at each of those census tracts, the graph that you see here is the percentage of Hispanic origin of people that live in those three census tracts. Um, and this is from the 2010, uh, census data. So I suspect when we get the 2020 data that it will look a little bit different and those uh, the blue areas will increase was, is what I would um, expect. Uh, next slide, please. If you also look at the persons of Hispanic or Latino origin in uh, Kansas and how that's grown, that's the orange line. And again, from 20 from uh, 2000 to 2010. But if you look at the blue line, this is the persons of Hispanic origin uh, that the growth in Wichita. And as you can see, it has exceeded the growth in in the state. And again, I uh, suspect when we get the 2020 data that we will see that line, um, those two lines uh, 
uh, diverge even more. Next slide, please. And then if you look at um, those 14,000 people that live in those three census tracts, that's a little over 2,800 families. 61% of those families identify as Hispanic or Latino. And here's the really telling statistic that 32% of that 61% live below the poverty level. And so this is some of the um, reason for uh, what for the project that, that we're undertaking and moving forward. Next slide, please. So we have a community aspiration of a community that is informed, engaged, productive, and contributing. And we're looking at two primary focus areas. The first is workforce and career readiness, and the second is small business development. And as I talk through this, you'll see how, how this all fits. But we, we looked at um, a lot of needs in that in the community that we're serving. And there are a lot of things that we could could do with um, a lot of work. We've come to the uh, realization that these two focus areas we think will have the most uh, influence in this community. Next slide, please. So um, we have an aspirational vision of creating a multicultural, multi generational resource center that serves this north end neighborhood with providing a lot of information and a lot of services in a very welcoming and and comfortable uh, facility so what could help the community achieve this aspiration this vision you know um, if this if this vision uh, were fulfilled what would the component parts consist of next slide please so this is where the Community Resource Center comes in. Next slide, please. So we're looking at locating that Community Resource Center at um, the current Evergreen Library facility. And this is a city-owned facility at 25th and Arkansas. Again, the, the current lo uh, library location. And we are, um, if those, of, I'm sure all of you are familiar with this library. When you walk into the library, if you go left, um, that's where all the library resources are. And if you go right, there are meeting rooms and offices that are empty right now and kind of a big lobby area. And so what we're looking at is co-locating organizations into this facility. And uh, so we'll have city government functions, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes, and then some separate, separate nonprofit organizations that will also, also co-locate with this. Next slide, please. And so the Community Resource Center will have these services in it. So information, city services, educational opportunities, uh, career readiness, small business development assistance, leadership development, family support, and then some additional uh, resources. And I'll talk, I'll talk about these more fully when I talk about our partners in just a few minutes. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And then, as we said, in an environment that is welcoming, safe, culturally inviting, comfortable, and bilingual. And again, those of you that are familiar with, with the library, uh, they have bilingual um, staff members there at Evergreen. The Evergreen Neighborhood Center also has the, our staff at the Neighborhood Center. Both of them are bilingual. So at the Neighborhood Center, we have a center director. Um, her title is really community service representative. So she does all of, all of the um, um, connections between neighborhoods in District 6, uh, but she also runs that center. Uh, Ana Lopez, she's bilingual. And then Sarah Pineda is also our administrative aide, and she is bilingual. And I think that's really important for what we're uh, creating here in the community that we're serving. Next slide, please. So we are bringing together four organizations. And so if you, I think if you click that, it'll show that. Four organizations to create this Evergreen Community Resource Center. And these four organizations, if you, next slide please, have a collective partner mission of helping residents and their families reach these per, uh, uh, personal goals of greater self-sufficiency as informed, engaged, productive, and contributing community members. So this is going to be a collaboration of co-located nonprofits and the city of Wichita working together 
to um, accomplish this mission. So you might ask, well, who are those partners? You've thrown those out there, Cindy, and um, who are these partners and what are, what are they going to be doing? So next slide, please. So first, the city of Wichita, and this is the one you're probably most um, familiar with. So the city of Wichita serves as a reliable source of information for connecting residents with city services, resolving neighborhood issues, um, developing civic engagement and building community capacity. It's also an essential knowledge resource, and that's really where the library comes in because they provide small business support, workforce development, Hispanic education, and digital literacy and inclusion. And it, the city services that will be located in this building will be the Evergreen Neighborhood Center, the Evergreen Library, uh, community policing and neighborhood inspection. And so at the neighborhood center currently, community policing have an, have an office space there now, and the neighborhood inspector also has a, a space there. So they'll all be moving with us um, and to help us create this uh, truly great uh, community resource center. Uh, next slide, please. The second organization um, that will be part of this is a new nonprofit called Empower Evergreen. And this is a new a nonprofit that is going to be established uh, with a board of directors and this um, and, and hire an executive director. And this executive director will help facilitate communication, collaboration, and coordination of activities among all the co located nonprofits and other program partners that we have. And they'll act as a connector to the continuum of educational opportunities, uh, work readiness preparation, and small business development resources. And they'll also work uh, with our other partners to help prepare um, the startup vendors that are working out of the seasonal Nomar Plaza Mar uh, Marquito, uh, sorry, uh, Marquito. And uh, so that's the work that they'll be doing. But they really, when you see all the partners that we work with, including the city of Wichita and then all of our other partners. We think there's a real need to have this organization to act again as the facilitator and the connector. The city's providing the facility and the services that the city provides, but we don't really have the capacity to do this kind of work. Next slide, please. The third organization that will be co-located in the facility is the Kansas Hispanic Education and Development Foundation. And this um, organization provides opportunities for education and leadership development, including they do college preparation programs for eighth through 12th graders. They help uh, students with their financial aid. So they help them apply for financial aid and be successful at that. They do leadership training development for eighth through 12th graders and also for um, a group they call their Hispanic alumni, which are college students who have been awarded scholarships through their program. So I don't know how familiar any of you are with KHEDF, but they um, they award scholarships to young Hispanics and Latinos to go on to uh, four year colleges and technical uh, schools. They're a very successful organization. They fit really well with um, the mission and the aspiration that we have in terms of workforce and career readiness. And so they will uh, have an off, they'll have offices in this new facility. Next slide, please. And then the fourth organization that will be co-located, you know, have people in our facility will be the Kansas Department for Children and Families. We have a DCF rep already at the neighborhood center and she will be moving with this. And so she, um, she works um, at uh, prevention and protection services, protecting children, promoting healthy families, encouraging uh, personal responsibility. Uh, so she has a variety of services for children, families, and vulnerable adults. They do some rehabilitation services for uh, vocational rehabilitation, disability determination services, uh, economic and employment services, so cash, food, medical, energy, child care assistance, and some employment services systems uh, services, and then child support services, which are the things probably that you've heard the most about in terms of what DCF does. Uh, um, Francis is uh, is our uh, DCF representative at uh, the Evergreen Neighborhood Center, and she has a, a large clientele, uh, which is good and bad, right? We prefer not to have to need those services, but um, because there is a need, she has uh, a large clientele that she works with uh, at the neighborhood center, and so uh, they visit us quite often. 
in addition to these four organizations that are going to have offices in uh, the renovated facility, we also have additional partners that already work with us, either work with the library or work with the neighborhood center or both. And so um, here's the first group, and you can see that these are all kinds of groups, you know, all the way from uh, the workforce center, uh, to uh, educational institutions, uh, the Wichita Hispanic Chamber has been working with us. Uh, so all kinds of things. Uh, there's next slide, please. Here, here's some additional uh, folks that work with us. Humankind comes and does Operation Holiday from our facility. We've been working with the nonprofit Chamber of Service, helping us with this. Uh, WSU Tech is doesn't offer services at this time but is really interested in working with the library and the neighborhood center and the new empower evergreen in terms of providing some of their services in our facility uh, and so we're really excited about that so anyway you get a good sense of the these organizations will come into the building do programming, provide their services there. They won't have permanent offices, but they will have some space where uh, some shared offices where they could spend time there. We'll also have some collaboration space, classrooms, uh, conference room where uh, people can uh, provide their, their services from there. Next slide, please. So we think that the benefits of this is economic self-sufficiency through increased educational attainment. So we, you know, our partners will help assist with preparation for high school readiness for A through um, 12th grade, 12th graders, GED testing. We have some partners that do that. Um, tech school for high school students. Uh, so again, I talked about WSU Tech preparing students for four-year college, you know, um, we think there will be a greater number of successful small businesses. One of the reasons that we chose small business development as one of our focus areas is that we know in this community, there are a lot of small businesses operating, people are operating them out of their kitchen, out of their garage, out of their trailers, out of, you know, just a lot of small businesses who aren't quite ready to to take advantage of the services that are available in the city for entrepreneurs and small businesses. So when you think about what um, E2E is doing or launch prep out at WSU or the um, Small Business Development Center and some of the services they offer, or SBA and the office, the um, services they have, these, these small business um, owners aren't quite ready for those programs. And so we saw a real gap between uh, where people are and where they could be in order to take advantage of these resources. And so this is where we really think um, our partners can help us with a curriculum uh, to get people, you know, from one place to another to be able to take advantage of some of these uh, services that exist in the city. And then we also think that this will be a one stop neighborhood. Um, place that has access to information, city services, family support. And then finally, if you've um, paid attention to what's been going on with Project Wichita, one of the things that came out of the Project Wichita um, research was a focus area on strong communities and neighborhoods uh, action plan. And one of their action plans is the creation of an anchor institution model. And an anchor institution streamlines and leverages access to resources and community partnerships to innovatively address critical community issues. And um, we believe that this is what, what we are doing. Uh, you know, connecting residents to resources and services and opportunities to really improve the strength of the local neighborhood and the local community. So I've um, talked with the project Wichita representatives, given them this same uh, presentation, and um, they um, have affirmed that they believe that we are creating an anchor institution here. And, and part of that, you know, executing the executing the project Wichita uh, action plan. All right, um, next slide, please. So I just want to take you through a timeline of how we got uh, here in terms of um, all of this this work that I just presented to you. So in, from 2016 to 2017, there was a lot of community engagement and research that went on to figure out 
what what are the needs and how would we help fulfill those needs in december of 2017 that's when the city council approved the dedication of the one million dollars um, over three years to be used for the renovation of the facility um, and then the evergreen advisory group uh, had their first meeting so i have a, a small group of people that we meet uh, as needed to talk about how do we um, move forward with this project. And so uh, Cindy Berner sits on that advisory group along with Jean and Yolanda Camarena, who are the um, founders of the Kansas Hispanic Education Development Foundation. They sit on it. Janet Miller, my predecessor, sits on it. Alicia Sanchez, who is the uh, board chair of the Wichita Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, sits on it. Cindy Miles, who is the executive director for the nonprofit chamber, she sits on it. Uh, Ron and Marty Cornejo uh, also uh, serve as advisors to us. Seems like I'm missing somebody, Cindy, but anyway, uh, that's the, you kind of get the gist of it. These are people who have a vested interest in this community and want want uh, want it to move forward. So um, they, so that, so we had our first meeting and then in spring of 2018, we did some things uh, in the community that were kind of little pilot tests of things that we would like to to have grow at this community center. So the first thing was we created the Civic Engagement Academy and we had our inaugural class in spring of 2018. And I see that Lauren's on this call. I know Lauren's been through that program. Uh, this program helps um, people learn how to be civically engaged with municipal government. And the curriculum was written by one of the staff members at the Kansas Leadership Center. We, got, we had a grant from the Kansas Health Foundation to create this uh, academy. Kansas Leadership Center helped us write that curriculum. So it's based on the principles of the Kansas Leadership Center, but it all of the all, all of the curriculum teaches that teaches people how to uh, engage with their local government. Um, we were so we held four classes of that. We were going to held our fifth class until the pandemic hit, so we're on hold. But um, that program's been very successful. A, a nice pilot that's become very successful. Uh, we also in spring of 2018 started some small business classes for the Mercado vendors, uh, and those were in Spanish. Those were quite uh, were very popular also. And also in spring of 2018, we started having some key stakeholder meetings. Um, the neighborhoods around Evergreen do not have a neighborhood association. And so we needed to reach out to, to some key stakeholders and start talking to them about the direction we were headed. In February, oh, next slide, please. From February 28th to November of uh, 2019, we met with a group of people called the Friends of Evergreen. And this, we have a distribution, a email distribution of about 120 people um on this list and they are mostly they are people that have some connection to um the uh population around the evergreen center most of them are service providers um, or some sort of provider in that neighborhood so they were really helpful in helping us think through this idea think through what the needs of the community were as we begin to um think about the space, what should it look like? And as we began to talk about the neighborhood center and the library coming together, um, having them understand that and how, again, having them help us think that through. Um, so they were uh, really instrumental in what the floor plan would look like and what services ought to be there and how they could be a piece of that. Um, next slide, please. And then in February of 2018, through the present, the advisory group's been working on uh, this framework that I presented to you today. Um, and then in August of 2019, uh, SJCF architect, architect uh, developed the preliminary building spaces of a combined neighborhood center and library and these co-located organizations. And I, I, I'm, uh, failed to mention something at the very beginning that I should have. Um, back in, I think it was in 2018, one of the early budget recommendations when we were looking for ways to have a balanced budget, the Evergreen, it was um, 
it was brought forward that we would close the Evergreen Library. And at that time, um, I took we were working on this project and I told the city manager that that just didn't make any sense because what we were looking working on at the neighborhood center, this project at that time, the library was such an important part of what we were going to do. If you look at workforce and career readiness and small business development, the resources that we need to do some of that work reside in the library. And if the library wasn't there, it would make our work very, uh, very difficult. And that's when we began to talk about what if we combined the neighborhood center and the library into one facility that in in some way would protect the library because they would be an integral part of what we're doing now as it turned out we went through the budget process and you know the libraries came off the chopping block and they continued but having talked about that we decided to go forward with that idea because it it made sense not just not just from that perspective but to really create this anchor institution this community uh, community center and so in september of 2019 through the present we've been working on um, city co-location meetings and um, i don't know how much you guys have talked about this at all but um, you would you would think if you bring two departments from one organization together that'd be pretty easy right well, any of you that have worked in big organizations know, know that's not true. So we have um, had, we, we've been working through this. Uh, we had an outside facilitator come in for, I think, four days over the course of about a month and work with the staffs from the neighborhood center and the library and, and talk about this co-location and how it, how it will work. And I think, um, and, and Cindy, you can give your perspective on this. Uh, we were in the room the first day of the retreat and after at the end of the day they voted us off the island right so they they decided that the leadership that Cindy and I and uh, Janet Johnson sh who um, runs the uh, she has the staff for the neighborhood centers uh, should not be part of the meetings anymore and uh, I say that kind of kiddingly because we agreed to that and what they had us do was establish OK, the, the, these are the criteria that have to be met as you guys think about what this floor plan ought to look like and how the two organizations can come together. And um, and then we'll leave. And then when we come back, you can present us in that we have veto power, but we'll we'll turn you loose and um, just really turned out, I think, really well. And when we saw the floor plan, I don't think Cindy or I changed anything i mean i think they got it they understood the criteria we set and um, they made it work for our clients that are going to come in to this facility as well as our staff and so i was pretty pleased with it cindy do you want to add anything to that no i think you're right they did a terrific job and you know being on the front line with the customers they really knew the things that people were asking for and they incorporated everything yeah yeah, it was really it was a really good experience. And I think I thank our staff. I'm sure there are going to be bumps in the road as we bring two organizations together. But I think those four days together um, really set a framework for them um, to work together. What you know, what we found was even though they were on the same campus, they didn't really know each other personally. Uh, so it was a really good, ex I think, a really good experience for staff by all accounts. Uh, they took a group picture the last day. Uh, and they were all smiles and they weren't all smiles the first day I can tell you that so so it was really good all right next slide um, so next steps here's where we are we are finalizing the building renovation design uh, those um, bid documents are going to go out uh, pretty soon we're finalizing agreements with our partners so those partners that are going to be co-located and others that will have shared space with us we're um, working on MOUs with them um, we're securing seed funding for the Empower Evergreen nonprofit. We're, we're trying to secure, we are securing five years of seed funding. So 
Uh, we think that'll take about uh, five hundred thousand dollars for for the first five years, um, and we have pledges right now for three hundred and fifty thousand of that. So uh, we're well on our way to securing that funding and have uh, getting ready to make some additional asks. Uh, what that will fund is a, as I said earlier, an executive director for five years. And uh, during that, five, well, the reason we want to secure that seed funding is to allow someone to come in, uh, get on board and then have some time to figure out what's the sustainable plan for this Empower Evergreen. So I, I do believe that there will be some philanthropy as part of that, you know, once we get past the five years, but it can't be all philanthropy. There'll have to be some grant writing. They'll also, we're looking at some possible revenue streams. Um, uh, we just don't know what those are right now, but if we can secure five years of funding, we believe that that'll give us time to figure that out. Um, and then we're ready to uh, begin the renovation. So, um, questions, comments, ideas, anything I missed? You know, I'm so familiar with this. Sometimes I, I skip right over things. So, are there any questions uh, for the vice mayor from the, any member of the board? Any comments? Does it sound like a good idea? Does it sound like a bad idea? <laughs> uh, it's a great idea. The The level of, uh, of work that's been involved in this uh, and bringing together various resources to uh, uh, to get this together in one location that's gonna serve so many from one location is just amazing. So uh, a big kudos to the work that you and the group have done. Oh, no, are you kidding? Go ahead, and when uh, when this is uh, completed, it's uh, it's going to be something to behold, and something that the uh, the community is just going to uh, rally around, and it's going to be great. It's just going to you know, be and and Kevin related to that. One of the things that um, I've talked about from the beginning, and 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 Cindy too, is that you know this this might be being done somewhere else in the nation. I'm sure it is, where you have a you know, a neighborhood center and a library together, but we're not doing this anywhere else in Wichita. And so I, I think this is really innovative on the part of our uh, of our city and of our staffs to, to be able to do this. And does it, I think this is gonna be something really special. Completely agree. You do have, I think Lauren has a comment. Yeah. Lauren? She just answered exactly what I was going to ask, which is if this, if this is a novel idea here and elsewhere, so. Thank you for pre-answering my question. <laughs> sure. Chuck? Yeah. Chuck? Yeah, uh, what's the target date for this to be operational? Um, so uh, right now we're looking at the um, July of 2021. That's the last schedule I saw, right? You know, we're just getting ready to go out with bid documents. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of wait for that, but the last, um, project management chart I saw we're looking at July and I think we're looking at a I don't know what we're going to call it but when we have to you know temporarily close the evergreen library we need to we're gonna have to think of some real something better than saying closing the library um, I think we're going to have a celebration and talk about this um, and I think we're targeting uh, late July of this year early August yeah, we're anticipating at this point that we will probably suspend most of our operations at Evergreen right around Labor Day. We are going to explore, we're trying to get a meeting on the schedule. Um, also on that Evergreen campus was a former Grace Med Clinic that's now vacant. And so we have a city team that's trying to get together to take a look at that to see if we could do something in a way of a very small point of presence for the library since it looks like it's gonna be nine months instead of maybe three or four, which we originally thought that construction might take. So we're gonna see what we can do. We also though have needs um, because of hiring freezes and vacancies where we will need to take some of that evergreen staff and reallocate them in that interim to cover work in other places. Okay. Chuck? I, I love the idea about uh helping prep kids for high school and college or I assume trade school or whatever too and leadership things and there are there are some organizations of retired educators that I'm sure would be happy to assist in that sort of thing. 
to be a great resource. Some yeah. of us old, some of us old guys. Yeah, that would be great. And those are the kinds of things we're looking at. Again, you know, I look at this again as the the city's providing the facility and the services that the city provides, but we don't want to do the programming beyond what we already do. We want other partners to come in and, and do that programming. Other comments or questions from the board? Vice Mayor, thank you very much. I, I'll close with, uh, with this. When we were going through the collaboration between members of the city council and members of the library board, this is exactly one of the primary goals that we as a group came together with and how we were gonna be able to serve the city and use resources effectively and efficiently. So I congratulate you on this particular project because when all of the branch facilities are completed some time down the road, we're gonna look at the Evergreen as a, as a model for what we're trying to do. Thank you, Kevin. I, I really appreciate that. And um, as you guys think about this, if you have comments or questions that you realize you had, didn't ask me, feel, feel free to reach out to me. Um, C. Claycomb at Wichita.gov. I'm pretty easy to find. So thank you so much for uh, letting me have a little bit of time from your meeting. You. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. With that, we will call our meeting to order. Uh, first item on the list is the recognition of outgoing board member Axel. Is Axel with us? I don't think Axel came on the line. Um, he, you know, served two years on the board. We thought maybe he was going to be on the call today, but we just wanted to thank him for his effort. As a lot of you know, he's involved in construction. He's involved in real estate. And so we found this great book, Beginner's Guide to DIY and Home Repair. And it's uh, essential DIY techniques for the first timer or for somebody preparing their house to go on the market. And so this is gonna go actually in the Linwood collection in his honor. Very good. Yes. We thank Axel for his service. And I'm sure we'll see him around. Uh, next on the agenda will be our introduction of our new board member, Abby Bowman. Welcome, Abby. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you are interested in being on the board of directors of the Advanced Learning Library? Oh, geez, I always hate this part. I'm never good about talking about it. Abby, can you pop up your volume a little bit? Um, yeah, can you hear me better now? Or? That's better. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm not very good about at talking about myself. Um, my name's Abby. Um, I have been involved with various things in the city since I moved here in 2009. Um, most people probably, if you know me at all, probably know me from some sort of LGBTQ advocacy um in the past i've served on a couple of nonprofit boards generally related to that community um i'm kind of really excited about this opportunity with the library board because i feel like reading literacy community engagement um those sorts of things are really important especially now that we find ourselves in some interesting times on a couple of different fronts um, and I feel like the library has a really kind of unique place in the community where it can um, serve, you know, a, a everybody and really connect the community in ways that maybe other for-profit or um, differently focused organizations can. So I'm just really happy to be here and be able to get involved and figure out where I fit in. So, yeah. Well, we welcome you to our board. We look forward to working with you to make our city a better place and educate and uh, literacy is uh, a big part of that. So thank you for your, op for your willingness to serve. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Item four on the uh, agenda is the approval of the agenda. Everybody should have received their packet. And uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? And whomever makes a motion, please just identify yourself and we'll go from there. 
Tadana um, motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Tadana. Is there a second? Shannon Littlejohn, second. Thank you, Shannon. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Public comment is item number five that's been suspended during our virtual meetings. Item number six is a motion to approve the minutes of the May 19th, 2020 board meeting. Chuck, so moved. I have a motion by Chuck. Is there a second? Lamont with the second. <laughs> Thank you, Lamont. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Aye. Motion carries. Item number seven, unfinished business. The proposed exterior mural at the Angelo Northeast Branch. Who's taking this on? Um, I'll, I'll do an introduction and then I'll probably turn it over to a few of the board members. So you'll recall at the last board meeting, we had the conversation about a proposal from Real Men, Real Heroes to paint a mural on the north facade of the Maya Angelou Branch Library. There was um, some uncertainty about the application of the community unit plan for that. Um, in my conversations with members of the planning department, I was told that the requirement of the brick and stone facade would um, prohibit the installation of the mural on that location. Um, at the last board meeting, Lamont and Madonna asked to be able to take this back, work with council member Johnson. And um, the council member did reach out to another member of the planning department who said he thought there would not be a problem with the CUP on that. Um, I also was in touch with Bernadette Bradshaw, who's the staff support for the design council because um, all public art goes through a review with them. And um, she said that the considerations that they would have as they would do a review would be um, things that relate to the neighborhood to go through. So on your agenda report, you see that we not only are providing you the current facade and then the rendering of the image, but we're also providing the context um, of the neighborhood for that to go through. So um, Lamont did ask that this come back onto the board uh, agenda as an item of new business. You have several things you can do. You could um, approve the mural. You could uh, approve the mural contingent on a favorable review by the design council. Design council actually is advisory, so they don't have the final say. Um, so you could do something along those lines. If you like the idea of um, public art in addition to the branch, but you have concerns about this particular project, you could um, ask that the board or staff start working with Real Men, Real Heroes to come up with some alternate project that addresses your concern, but also provides the public art, or you could just deny the request or something in between along that continuum. So um, I don't know if um, Lamont Tadana wanna speak be part of the project or if Randy as the chair of planning and facilities may have comments. Um, well, I, I don't in, in terms of, of the overall uh, project and the landscape and the scope uh, and reviewing what they want to place on uh, my Angelo, I, I am in full support of, of getting that up there. I know that, that having that mural up there has been uh, a conversation that we've had for the last several years and certainly turning that uh, facility to be more um, welcoming and inviting to the community for the community to have uh, more attachment to it and also taking that building and um, beautifying it and, and really paying homage to the individual for which it was named after. Uh, I, I think that those are all just all proponents and pluses. I mean, because we've, we've talked about uh, over the years in terms of engagement and making sure that uh, folks in that community really 
uh, began to feel some sort or sense of, of attachment and belonging and being able to look out uh, into the community and see a piece of the community staring back at them. And I think that this is a, a huge step in that direction. Uh, I think it's a huge opportunity that will be impactful uh, for the generations of now and the generations going forward. Um, so my certainly my feeling and my request, my desire would be to uh, move forward with the project. Um, and so I, I don't know, uh, to Donna and Randy, if they had additional uh, things that they wanted to put forth as well. To Donna, how about you? Yeah, uh, just to echo Lamont's sentiments, I, 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 I like the mural and I think that it's going to be something that the kids are going to be able to look at and say, I, I had a part in uh, putting some artwork in our, our neighborhood. So they'll have some attachment in that way. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy when I ride by a building in our neighborhood and see some type of artwork. And so this, um, this mural really, really uh, will be something that uh, is going to be good for that particular area because there's not that many art pieces over there. And um, so we really just want to liven up Maya Angelou, make it a place that calls people in. And I think that this mural is going to do that. So I have a question uh, to just start the discussion. Um, are we opening up a precedent here for making changes to the exterior of the branch library system in the city of Wichita? Mm -hmm. how, do, how do we identify and how do we discuss something that starts here but could be at any of the branches or maybe even the downtown advanced learning library? Are, are we opening up something here that um, Others might take it and run with it, and then all of a sudden we're looking at all of our facilities coming into play or being modified. It's a question. I, th I think that's a, 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 I'm sorry, who was speaking? Was somebody going to speak? No, I think Lamont wants to address that. Go ahead, Lamont. So my, my question is, um, and I think that your, your question is very valid, now, I haven't been over to the Evergreen branch in its existing nature, but is that is that branch, is it tailored or geared towards the, the cultural demographic over there as well? Are there some nuances over there on the exterior of that branch that represent that community there in its are. existing? There is a mural um, currently on the Evergreen building. That was the city adopted public art. At the time the building was remodeled at the Angela branch, the adopted public art project was the signage um, that is out on 21st Street that was done by Norm Terry, who was a local artist um, from the neighborhood and an educator in the Wichita Public Schools. Okay, so so I, I guess that leads to my so there, there is in, in discussion, there is precedent set with in terms of the facilities being demographically conditioned for uh, the individuals in there. And so we're just kind of talking about in terms of, of designation. So, I mean, if in terms of de in de designation, uh, I see that, but then in, in retrospect and looking at what the definitive nature of the application was for at Evergreen and what the definitive nature of what we're trying to apply at Maya Angelou, I think that those, I think that the correlation is there. And I think that the precedent is there to mirror off of the existing culture that's already been set. Now to how do we alleviate from this becoming a, a rampant um, thing that maybe if, if a group or entity wants to do that downtown, if they want to do it south, I think that that's a, that is something that probably should be addressed. Because I, I, see, the, I see the concern with that piece. Well, this is one of the things that I started thinking about over the last 30 days since our last meeting, since we didn't take action. And, and uh, you know, we were hoping that uh, that period of time between the last meeting and this meeting, each of the individual board members would be able to reflect upon this question. So that being said, talking out loud, would the board want to have some type of policy that would not 
put future boards at a disadvantage? Because one thing I am concerned about is making some type of uh, uh, commitment that would put a future board at a disadvantage. That's just my thought. Yes. Jonathan. I would be agreeable to having a policy, but I would suggest that we base it in part on what other libraries do when they are confronted with the similar um, choices. We should look at what they do, other libraries. Okay. I confess I'm torn on this. I can see how this would be a, a real plus to the community. But I'm also concerned about painting on brick. So, I wouldn't be willing to support referring this to the design council without um, recommendation to get their opinion. Other board members? What? Chime in on this. Chuck here. Hey, Chuck. Um, I, I have mixed feelings about this too. I like the idea of, of the cultural uh, identity and the, you know, honoring the namesake. Uh, but the, the painting on the brick bothers me. And I, if we do go ahead with this, there needs to be a very definite plan for maintenance, because I could see uh, this deteriorating, um, you know, just over time, and somebody's got to be in charge of, of keeping it in good condition. So, uh, otherwise, it becomes an eyesore. Thank you, Chuck. Anybody else? I don't know if Shannon's Shannon got her hand up. Yeah, I'm, I'm just mu I muted myself for a minute because I have a cat who likes to participate in the Zoom meeting. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't think. I, you know, I love this idea of this mural. I grew up in a brick house, red brick house that never got painted, and uh, so I'm kind of scared to paint brick. But uh, this sounds like a really nice project. I think basically we do need some sort of policy that opens the door to the public to maybe suggest this in their uh, branch library or anywhere, but has um, requirements of this nature that we want, you know, the, I mean, we're still running the library system. Um, the design council, I do like to have the design council weigh in just because there's a bunch of artists on there. And, uh, but I think they found some really fine artists, and I think they are talking about a maintenance program with this. So some sort of policy that is tight enough to, to make sure we have a quality piece of art, maintenance program for any kind of, any kind of installation, I think. Okay. Others? Randy wants to speak. Randy? Randy? I think you're muted, Randy. Randy, are you there? And here you, Randy. Shelby Peterson. Hi, Shelby, go ahead. Is now exiting. Shelby's exiting. Does Randy know about the Star Six? Does anyone know about Star Six? 
I don't know about star six. Randy, I don't know if you can hear us. We're not hearing you. I don't, um, we do. Let me see if you're on the chat. No. Bear with us, everybody. One of the little technical challenges of everybody being in their own place. Um, I don't know what to do about it. Randy, would you try and unmute yourself now and see if that works? There he is. I can see you. Can't hear no, we you. Can't. Randy, we're not hearing you at all. Do you want to, Randy, go back and try the call in phone number? Oh, that was somebody. Try it again, Randy. Randy, can you hear us? Mm. Yeah. Randy, I'm going to call you. Hey, Randy, I'm going to put you on speaker. Is there anything you want to speak to this uh, issue about? Yeah, I can see. I can see you all. I just I can't get my microphone on. Increase the volume a little bit? Probably not. Okay. I want to mention a couple things. One, a little history on this is if you, if you go back about 30 years, yeah, they're not, this they're area not we're talking about was, was a blight area. Let's have him call into the number. Randy, we, we're this isn't working. We're not able to hear you. Uh, Cindy, what did you mention? I'm, um, I'm going to give him a call-in number, and then he could call in to the phone. Hang on just a second. Um, I'm going to have to get to another. Sean or um, Greg, would one of you into the chat put in the phone number for the call in for this meeting? Yes, I will. One second. Yes, I see your note, Lauren, about the links and the phones at the top of the agenda. That's a great idea. There it is. Okay, Randy. It's 
It's the 4629137. Okay, the number is 4629137. 4629137 Okay, we should have him here momentarily. Anybody else has thoughts while they're Did you ask if anybody else has thoughts? Yeah. Please. Um, I I was just gonna um go, kinda try to recant um what uh Kyle Ellison from Real uh, Men, Real Hero said on the last call. Um I think he said that they would be taking care of maintenance. Is that correct, Cindy? Um, he, he said he thought they might be able to, um, I did not understand him to consider that that was a full ongoing commitment. Okay. And, and the reason I think that's true to Donna is because this is a time limited, um, grant. Right. Oh, it popped off. I can't see. The conference ID number. Um, it was there. Can I make a comment? This is Jennifer. Absolutely. Why don't we try? Hey, this is Jennifer Goheen. I love the idea of the mural. I actually just had to repaint brick on my own house, so I know it does take Refine some you. maintenance. Uh, with respect to that, I think we do need a maintenance policy, but I absolutely love the idea of a mural. I think it just it just really adds to that building. So that's my commentary. I have to go because I have a conference call, um, but I just wanted to put my input there. Thank you. We can try and call him. Jennifer Goheen is now exiting. And, and, I, and I will say that I definitely uh, agree with that there needs to be a comprehensive maintenance program in place uh, should this be approved at any it, it because I, I do agree that uh, we do not need to get this up now and then five years from now it's not being yeah. properly taken care of and and we have an, an eyesore that nobody is wanting to commit to to upkeep six four eight ninety nineteen thank you Randy if you can hear us we're calling you well we're trying we're trying it failed. That's his cell phone number. While we're waiting, this is Donna. Hi, Donna. Hey, I went back through my notes from the last meeting, and with regards to upkeep, I have a question mark. The question was asked, but I have a question mark, but I didn't make any kind of a notation. Just thought it's, I'd share that. It's not letting us call him. What I remember. Unknown participant is now joining. There he is. That this project would be coordinated by the artists of California. And it was an undertaking to maintain, but no specifics. Right. Randy, did, was that you who came on? You're there, but uh, you're muted. Mm -hmm. 
Randy, we're just not we're just not getting with you. Sorry, but we need to go on. So, do we still have a quorum here? You do. We still have a quorum. So, Lamont, I'm going to leave this up to you. Uh, in light of the fact that we lost a few and we don't have a full board, but we do have a quorum, are you looking to make a motion or to Donna, uh, or do we want to suggest moving this to the next meeting? Or refer to design council or refer to design council as jonathan has suggested what would you like to do uh, i would i would like to um present the information to the design council to get their opinion and their consideration and i would also like to go back to uh real men real heroes uh and as well as councilman johnson uh, to make sure that we have some type of plan in terms of long-term maintenance, uh, to make sure that we have the, the, the financial means or whatever that means is going to take to make sure that we have those two uh, key items in place. And then I, and I, then I think I'm not trying to overstep my boundaries by any means, but I would also like to, if we could perhaps as a board, uh, take into consideration uh, what type of policy uh, may be need to put into place so that we can address your concerns as well, Kevin, so that we don't uh, have, you know, just random things beginning to pop up in the city. What would that look like to entail that if these conversations begin to occur going forward uh, with future boards, that they are not uh, hand tied to uh, just things that just random things popping up, but there is protocol uh, and guidance to lead these decisions that continue to stay in line with communities, but also stay in line with the library system as well. So that that would be, I, I guess, in, in a short term, short answer to table it, but to take those action items out to get with the design council to give to Don and myself the opportunity to go back to real men, real men, real heroes and Councilman Johnson, and then for the board to kind of look at what a policy would look, look like, but to allow these types of developments to occur uh, based upon a community desire. Lamont, I think that is a very well thought out and uh, viable idea. And uh, I can tell from the conversation that nobody is against the mural. Uh, right. We all want to uh, be inclusive. We all want to make sure that uh, we bring as much of uh, uh, the citizens and the population of the, of the city into something that would be uh, attractive and something that, would, that they could identify with. Uh, but we do have a couple of potentially unintended consequences that need to be thought out before we actually have a vote. So thank you for your comments. And that's where, what we'll do. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Um, okay, I had a question about, um, my mind was just thinking about uh, alternative options. And I, my, so just in my mind, I was thinking like, if there was any way to affix a piece of uh, art to the exterior wall, is that something um, that could be considered? I'm not sure what the rules are when it comes to something like that with the brick, um, or if there's going to be more of a concern with um, drilling or uh, affixing anything to a brick versus painting the brick. But I just, I just was kind of thinking, what could be a second option that can be uh, talked about or considered just in case uh, this paint thing doesn't um, all the way flush out or well, not flush out or, or you know what I mean like if it doesn't get approved right, mm -hmm. right. I, th I think to Donna that still would require the design council review and then also a supplementary review by the public works department to make sure that whatever that mechanism mechanism is for attaching doesn't um, create the opportunity for like Le leaks or different things. Gotcha. So um, if I could just clarify, um, I think Lamont's proposed actions were um, go ahead, um, ask for feedback from the design council on the project, have um, Lamont and Tadana reach it back to Real Men Heroes, Councilman Johnson, um, to clarify the long-term maintenance plan and to um, start researching a potential public art policy. 
Um, I don't know if that is a motion to table and do these things or if it's just a consensus. Now, this is a consensus. There's no motion on the okay. table for anything. So we, we know we have a little bit more work to do and we'll bring it back as unfinished business at the July meeting. And hopefully we'll have more information to where we can have a discussion and possibly a motion will be made and we can have a vote. I, I'm, I'm in complete uh, agreement with that. Donna, did you have anything that you wanted to, to put forth to add on to addition? No, that, that sounds good. I'm in agreement with what. Oh. Okay. okay. Thank you, everybody. We'll go on to the next agenda item and we'll get through this pretty quick. Uh, since we're not going to have any committee reports. Under new business, we have the May 2020 finance report and bills. Uh, the general fund bills, general fund COVID bills, and all other items totaled $1,348,102.63. A little clarification, that's a big number. And on, there's two items here. One month. And number two, under the gift and memorial fund bills of 404000 and change, 400000 of that was certificates of deposits that were purchased. So that's investments. Otherwise, there wasn't anything in the finance report for this month that was out of the ordinary that I found. And so I would make a motion that we approve the May 2020 finance report and bills as presented. That's a committee motion does not require a second. Is there any discussion or any questions by those who are still with us? Hearing none, all those in favor to approve signify no, by saying aye. Hmm? Aye. 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 Well, we didn't have a committee. We do need a second. I second. Thank you. I forgot we didn't have a committee meeting, so it can't be a committee motion, sorry. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries. The bills will be paid and approved. Standing committee reports. Is there any committee chair that would like to say anything about anything? Hearing none, we will go to the Director of Libraries report. Hey, I am thrilled to let you know that the City Council approved the lease agreement for the relocation of the Linwood Branch by unanimous vote today. So um, we will be moving forward on that project and anticipate a move-in date um, shortly after the first of the year. At the request of Councilman Johnson, we'll also be doing some follow-up, particularly with the staff at the Linwood Senior Center, who has continuing concerns about access to reading material. Um, and then the Evergreen Project that the Vice Mayor proposed and explained to you will go on to the City Council agenda next week. That is to initiate the library portion of that CIP funding to enable the timeline to move forward as she talked to you about. Um, yesterday, or maybe the day before, the city um, released a budget simulator online through social media. They are seeking um, feedback from citizens on um, priorities to close a approximately $4.7 million shortfall that still exists in the current year budget, you can reach that at wichita.budgetsimulator.com. Or if you follow the library on, or the city of Wichita on um, Facebook or Twitter, you can find that on um, the survey just takes a couple minutes to fill out. There's it's information on several departments to go through. Um, they will be taking that feedback and information from a social media town hall also scheduled for June 23rd. And um, the city manager will use that to finish his budget proposals. Those will be presented to council July 14th. The budget is scheduled for adoption on August 11th to go through. Um, at this point, we do have reductions that we know will be in the manager's recommended budget 
The one thing we don't know about is the status of the materials budget. To go through, um, council members over the past week have received a couple of complaints from citizens about the fact that the library has started recharging hold fees. While we don't have complete service, the ability to browse, um, I've responded back to them, and um, I think that they understand, certainly given the budget situation and the fact that there are options not to incur the fees and still borrow materials. Um, the council members seem to be satisfied with that, but I said that I would mention that here if you want to discuss that. And then um, I just want to draw your attention, if um, you didn't see it, to the letter that came to you, the mayor, and to me from Chelsea Long, expressing some concerns about lack of security at the Advanced Learning Library. Um, this was a complete surprise to us when we saw it. Um, I have been unable to get additional information because to the best of our knowledge, Ms. Long does not have a library account and did not put any contact information in the letter or on the envelope. So we don't know anything beyond um, what's in here. I did talk with some staff members. I talked with some of our security guards and um, I don't know that there is consensus with what she shared there. But beyond that, I would be happy to answer any questions or to take any action that you would like us to take. That's my report. Thank you. Any questions, comments uh, for the director? I have a question about the letter. She mentioned that members of staff seem to appear afraid. Do we have any that have said that they are afraid or uncomfortable? No. Other questions? Do you are you um do you are you required to reach back out to um, this lady or have you already? I I cannot because I don't have any contact. Oh, that's why she didn't leave her. information. That's okay. Well, the, my original question I was gonna ask was uh like alternative methods. Not sure if we uh, need to review this the security and um, that might be a thing, but just uh. Uh, my initial thoughts were training of staff to report issues. What's the current um, um, way uh, staff operates to um, address issues such as what she outlined in the letter? Turn off your computer audio. Oh, you can uh, hear me? That Sorry, my fan is going. Did you? Okay, I was asking um, if we have, what are the current um, mm -hmm. training? What is the current training for staff to report report issues that were outlined in this letter? Um, what we do is we immediately intervene. We notify the security guard and the librarian in charge to step in. Also, we document with incident reports. So I would say our program is robust and um, we have nothing on record that corresponds with anything that was in her letter. Um, we do have a great deal of difficulty um, when on occasion we do get these kinds of things which come, you know, this is dated um, May 28th and she's speaking about something that happened before the 16th of March. So it does make it kind of difficult for us to go back and, and try and identify what may have happened. I did talk with all of our librarians in charge also about their um, involvement and their impressions of the work with the security guards and they all agreed that they felt they were getting great support from our security guards and they're very aware of what's happening in the building. I know Lauren had a question. I, I just have a follow up. What's the policy for um, the kids corner just just for general knowledge uh, when it comes to adults uh, being in there? Do so, we have rules? Um, they are the computers are restricted um, for students. Unknown participant is uh, now exiting. Access to the area is open to anybody because there are a lot of reasons why adults might be wanting to access the there to go through, but we do keep an eye on what's going on. And um, 
Yeah, again, we're not aware that there's been any situation like this. Um, we very rarely have adults in the room, and when they are, they're there to get material and they leave. We don't um, have people who just go in there as their location of choice. Lauren? I, I no longer have my question. Again. <laughs> <laughs> very good questions to Donna. So, you know, at, at this point, what I'm kind of thinking is that this is maybe an isolated issue. Uh, somebody may be upset about something else. I'm not sure. But since there's no contact information and this is the first of uh, anything that we receive that goes down these paths, um, the director is certainly aware as to what's going on in the building and making the appropriate inquiries. So unless we receive additional items like this, I don't see it as a concern at this point. Are there any other questions for the director for the library report? Are there any announcements? This was a little bit longer meeting than normal and a lot of stuff. So um, yeah. next month we'll, uh, we'll have a more concise and smooth uh, uh, meeting, I'm sure. So that being said, that takes us to adjournment. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. And we'll be in touch and see you next month. Thank you. <laughs>